But well, one well, question one that keeps question coming, coming up, up uh, uh, people keep uh, asking uh, about the concept of baya. Maybe the, maybe the back home, some, some people some are, are born, born into it, into or, it or, or their family has family given, has given them, them, them baya into their with, with their shay, but they follow your teaching. There's a lot of questions or confusion. People are about baya. Yeah, Rahim. Inshallah, the baya is an allegiance and the allegiance is to Allah to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and asking that, I take a taruq, I take a path, I take a shaykh and a guide to bring me to that reality and that I be loyal to that path. And then all the teachings, that's why you, you see that all of these teachings they are the bayat. You know there's a bayah in which you say that I, I want you to recite something for me shaykh and I say, yes I'm in and we recite it and alhamdulillah. But the more important bayat is the one that you follow their advice <coughs> and you make it a lifelong process. That I'm listening to the talks, yes that's the bayat. I'm taking their advice, yes that's the bayat. I'm emailing so that I have my representation, they're like wakils for me, they represent me. I have to introduce myself, I have to keep myself to be familiar and, and don't let shaitan you know, so oh, I, I didn't want to communicate with you and bother you. No, no that's, that's your nafs saying, I don't want any guidance and I just like to live my life by myself. This is their job, this is their work, it's the, the going to a doctor and saying, I didn't want to come to you because I didn't want to bother you. No, that's, that's what they do, that's what they've been uh, destined for. That's the bayat then uh, participating, supporting, uh, being active in the tariqah, that's the importance of the bayat. Now if you recite something and you say, Amin, raise your hand and, and then you just go up upon your way, that, that's nothing. That was just for your entertainment. That's not the reality of the bayat, the bayat is a whole living process. So every couple of weeks we recite it out loud, alhamdulillah to make everybody you know take their allegiance and say it and repeat it for themselves. But the one whom is already practicing, doing, following, supporting, active in, in every aspect of it, learning it. When you watch the, the videos at home, take your notebook, write it. Make it a, a way of your entire life so that when you're studying this reality and studying from the website, you go to the website, you know, you can Google and you can search inside the website all the different articles on a subject that you're interested in. If you're interested in energy, there's subjects there. If you're interested in huruf, there's subjects there. If you're interested in faith and guidance and the reality of guidance, you go to knowmuhammad.com and you study like a student, you write notes, you print out the article you read them at night when the energy is, is, is most powerful, don't you know, read in between your office visits or work and you, you, you take a ihtiram and a, a respect for the knowledges and you print it out late at night and sit and connect your heart and read it. And you're asking Allah that I want to go in. Every knowledge that you read from these realities and then sleep, your soul is entering into that ocean of that reality. Whatever your mind couldn't comprehend because these articles and these teachings are not for the mind, it, it's for the soul. The soul will read it at night, that's the best time to meditate and then sleep on it so that your soul will go in to be dressed in its reality. And that's, that's the bayat, that's the reality of the bayat is when the students are active and they're locked into it and they're participating. And then every couple of weeks there's a recitation, you catch that recitation and go. But a lot of the cultural bayat is again like the McDonald's philosophy, drive through philosophy. I just took a bayat from the shaykh and I went or this shaykh passed through my town, I took a bayat and he left, I never saw them again. And uh, there was 5,000 people in the audience and I, I gave my hand bayat and I walked away. It's not that, the bayat and the reality of bayat is an allegiance. So when the Sahabi took bayat to Sayyidina Muhammad they entered into every type of jihad and they gave their life. And we said even the, the word of bayat is, I, I, I want to take bayat, it's not real, it's, that's not the word, it's I want to give my bayat to the tariqah. And to Prophet to Allah Most High, to Prophet and then to the turuq. So I want to give my bayat means 
that I want to give for myself of whatever Allah gave to me of my time, my rizq, my sustenance, my ability, my, my everything I'm rendering it back onto Allah to be in the service of Sayyidina Muhammad So to take everybody to that point is more important for us than to go around and keep just reciting this and reciting this and, and, and it's more important to be living the way of the bayat and to have the tariqah running through our veins versus just uh, running off of our tongue, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi and staff. Wa alaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, when, when we introduce our, ourselves to you via email, do we have to tell you all our experiences in life and spiritual experiences? No, not at all. You, as a matter of fact, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say any experiences, just you introduce yourself that you're so-and-so from so-and-so and following the tariqah and then if you have a question or just that you like the, the association, you love the zikr, that's it. They don't need a history report, they don't need to, to know you, you've had amazing dreams and you have accomplished uh, interesting maqams and all of that is from the nafs and they're not in, in need of anything. If you're destined for the shaykh, he already has your file and so the talks are already based on the file. So if, if we understand guidance comes from the world of light. Before anybody intended to tune in tonight, the intention came to them and the talk already was destined for them and they heard what they needed to hear by these talks and by these associations. So they're not waiting for people to tell them about the, their lives and, and what they want to say about themselves and how accurately they're going to portray themselves and their events and their version of the events in their lives because it's all nafsani. And what's more important is just make the connection and the shaykh's file is already, he has your medical file has been already sent into their process. So it's all uh, via electronic understanding. Today when you want to go see a doctor, before they'd have to mail your file from one doctor to another doctor. Now it's all in a central database so as soon as you make an appointment with the doctor your medical file is already there. So imagine then Allah if Allah is partitioning these souls to come and these souls will listen to you, these souls will be following this understanding in this way then that information on that soul has already been sent to those shaykhs, inshaAllah. As uh, Alaikum Sayyidi, um, can, you speak on, uh, can you speak about the lataifs? Is there any zikr for opening the lataifs after daily awrad? Yes again it's, it's from the A to the Z. So we're going to start always with the A. Because I know the other mujaddidis and uh, other groups they, they claim that they're going to open the latayafs and they give different zikrs of latayafs. But for tariqat and ashbandiyat al aliyah there's most important is to make your muraqaba and be solid and strong in the meditation practices. So you take all of the teachings, how to do the muraqaba, how to breathe, how to receive the fires of the shaykhs then they'll teach you that you should be connecting with Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Daghestani, connecting with their energy, building up this practice, building up all of these realities and, and connection with the shaykh. At that time then when your connection is solid with the shaykh, he's going to begin to send the fires and the energies upon the heart and so then you'll be moving towards those steps. So that's what's important is to have their spiritual connection with them and through their spiritual association they will begin to direct the student on the opening of their lataifs and the opening and focusing on the different colors of the lataif. Otherwise you having a key it's like the, when we go to Starbucks and you get the plastic card and my kids would take the card and run back into the car and say, Daddy got all these cards now we can get a whole bunch of Starbucks. I said, no Baba those are just cards, the plastic, you have to put money on it for it to work. So it means there has to be an electronic key, there has to be a code, there has to be an ikhlas and a sincerity that Allah granted. So there's a whole process that you have to be connected with them, they have to feel that you're trustworthy, you have to go through all the security clearance with them, character clearance, 
you know, they push you a certain way, they respond to you a certain way, they delay something a certain way and they want to see what type of characters are coming out because you're trying to get through the heavenly security. Imagine if everybody got through the heavenly security and they were crazy, violent and, and uh, disturbed people, what kind of a heavens would that be? So Allah's not opening anything until all of the safety checks have been given. So there's lots of crushing, lots of testing, lots of patience, all of these then is through the muraqabah, you're continuously meditating, meditating, meditating then difficulties and testings and agitations and aggravations and things come to you, bonuses come to you and did you give from the bonus? No. Did you do this? No. Did you… were you patient during this? No. So it means all oh, there's a whole process of how to bring out this reality and then when Allah finds their sincerity and the character is correct and their istiqam and their firmness and everything has been checked off, then the shaykh begins to send more and more fires into the heart, more inspirations into the heart. That's when they can even pass and that's when we gave the talks on lawama, means amara completely angry and the doors of the zawiyas are you know for the awa, for amara. It brings in all the people who have gone astray and who have angered Allah Even they think they're Muslim they've gone astray because they don't have the correct love for Sayyidina Muhammad They can be Hezb shaitan you know, they're a Daesh that think that they're calling the Azan and that they believe in Islam. So that's not the, the, that's not the process. Then they have to come to <coughs> Lawama in which they fight the devil and they fight pride and arrogance. And that's what's really important, you know why people get angry? Why would somebody get angry when, when they interact with other people? Anger is from pride. When you feel that you, you have reached somewhere or that you're someone or, or that you, you have some sort of knowledge or some sort of ability that you've achieved, the only reason you get angry is because you believe that that wasn't recognized, you didn't recognize me. And you didn't give me my, my due process of my due position or my due station. So they understood that you know anger is coming from pride. If you're not a prideful person when somebody will email, oh I don't have any pride, oh let us deal with you a couple of times and we'll see what kind of anger comes out of you. And that's what's important, that's what the servant has to find within themselves. And what Allah is asking to expose is that you have to fix these issues before trying to ascend into the heavens and then to open the lataifs and all of those are, you know the heart is, is the house of Allah So anyone who wants to get the heart book, we have a book on the, the lataif of the qalb. The, the lataif of the qalb is the house of Allah If somebody is not getting that and reading that and reading those knowledges, they're not interested in the house of Allah because within the house of Allah are the realities of the prophets, the angels, the books, the world of light, everything. So they study that reality, they meditate on that reality. Once they're connected and been sort of checked off for good character, then the fires begins to open on the different lataifs and opening the station of the, the yellow lataif and that's the station of the qalb and knowledges. So those there's a whole process on how to bring out that reality. I think Imam Shafi described when people were asking about all these different processes and then he brought a cup of milk and he says, you know this cup of milk, if I tell you there's cheese in here would you believe me? And if I tell you there's you know cottage cheese in here, there's ghee in here and there's all these products in here but you want to see them and I can bring them for you but it's a process and requires some time. So means that the milk if you stir it, you have to stir it in a way it brings butter. But if you look at it, it's just milk right now. So everything has a process and a condition and a timing and, and so there's a whole way to achieve this reality. It's never that I'm just going to call, get an email, give me ismul azam, that, that, that's the most bizarre email. When somebody emailed and, and, and many people have actually done that, they email and say, give me you know Allah's greatest name and, and uh, thank you very much. So those things never going to happen like that. This is a, is a process in which to learn the reality, to go deep into the reality and the first step is be strong in the connection with the shaykhs inshaAllah.
And anyone who has questions they should be also emailing help me at nurmuhammad.com. A reminder always to the audience and to, to our friends and people listening that please share that email, share the, share the help me at nurmuhammad.com and say ask the shaykh questions, you can email them, they'll give you information about the tariqah and everything. Especially when you're emailing groups and other people and the bad character of people. A couple people have emailed back that they send out to groups and the groups had some sort of nasty replies and responses. And that's you know that's the thing Mawlana would describe Shaykh Nazim Sultan Awliya that they are dogs, barking dogs. That the tariqahs just by virtue of saying this is a tariqah group or this is a WhatsApp group, they're all in the tariqah means that that's the association of sick people trying to get better, they're not the, the, the walking righteous. So anytime you're dealing with tariqah people sometimes they may exhibit the worst character and they become like the barking dogs just barking and saying bad things and, and bad characteristics. So that's an example right there that they weren't taught very well and they're not having the proper adab and manners so they even needed more so you should post more. <laughs> Sayyidi, is there anything we can do uh, besides wudu for anger? We tried the wudu but still got angry. Oh yeah, it, it's not a process that's going to end, you know you try one time wudu and <laughs> and that will go away. We just described before you asked the question that the anger is based on arrogance. So you have to take all the medicine. So when we say, why do you get angry? Go back in our lives and say, every time I got angry because at your level of the nafs where your nafs is at, you got angry because of an arrogance. An arrogance meant you thought you're something, certain position, work, job, it doesn't matter what the variable is. Because I think I'm something, I expect to be recognized. When somebody talks to me in, in a way that I don't, I, I recognize as the father, I recognize as the boss, re recognize as this or recognize as that. And when someone interacts with me at a, at a level that I'm not thinking is, is due for me, I get angry. And that was a sign there of arrogance. So then means when I have to take a path in which to bring down my arrogance. Then my zikr, I'll make more salawats, I'll, I'll keep making my washing and my wudu and every time I get angry I go make wudu and I'm going to put a rock in my mouth or a candy in my mouth like a lollipop and when I go to work if it's happening at work or happening at home or happening here or there, every time I'm going to have a lollipop in my mouth as a reminder, don't get angry. And then Allah will send a test, a test and a test and the more you pass that test Allah will give you the command of arrogance and your arrogance begins to go down and your humility will go up. So on your scale is if you push your arrogance down what happens to the other side? The humility goes up, you're a humble person. But if you cannot bring the arrogance down means your humility is not rising and Allah wants humility and not arrogance. So it's a whole medical system, you know you tap the knee and you see if the reflex is there. This is that, they're trying to see the reflex of you and Allah's trying to point that out to you, take a muhasaba and accounting. Where are you getting angry? What is this person saying each time that triggers it? Okay this is the, the, the pride and now how to counter that is just take it next time, be quiet, keep a, a way of patience, make sure that you're in wudu as soon as you can, walk away from that argument, make wudu to calm yourself. And then put an outside reminder upon yourself that you're going to now fight anger. So you wear like a bracelet or a band, we had the color bands like pink and burgundy or black or green and you put a band on yourself as a reminder for an issue you're trying to struggle with. Don't let it come out and say, I lost it again but you have to put something on my hand and say, okay this band is a reminder for me that I'm working on energy for the next 40 days I'm working on anger. And many tests will Allah will send and then we try to pass them, keep our wudu, do lots of salawats and when somebody's you know going right at you and upset with you, yelling at you, you just calm and quiet and breathe and make your connection of Awudhu Amri in Allah and Allahu basirun bi Allah Azza wa Jalla verily He sees His servant. 
So there's a whole process inshaAllah, it's not going to be just one time get angry and I go wash. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi, um, what's the adab when emailing helpme at nurmuhammad.com and we email a few times so we don't get a reply, do we still continue emailing? Yeah, you, you can email ten times. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, the adab is that don't expect a reply, is email and you know wait if a response didn't come then maybe read your email again and was like too, too much you know, uh, tell me all these secrets, tell me this, tell me that, tell me this then yeah you're probably not going to get a response because it's not a you know a info line where you get your own sobat in every private email that goes out. But basic information that uh, I just joined, I want to do this, I, I, I'm thinking of this I'm, and, and basic life issues, those types of things. But if you know, please give me tafsir of Surah so and so and I've emailed three times and it's not going to come. So just a matter of being patient, persistent, reread it again. If you think it was okay and it was something that you know to shed more light on a subject that's already been talked about. But don't give up, you just keep trying and alhamdulillah because everybody is just volunteering trying to process everything. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a personal issue, it's, it's more of a uh, just being patient during the whole process. Tariqah comes to teach patience. So anyone interacting with anything from the tariqah whether it's the shop online, whether emails, wherever it is. Everything is based on tari on, on uh, sabr and good manners. So imagine somebody's ordering a tawis into the UK, there's in the middle of a pandemic when absolutely no one's allowed to move and five days later they're upset that where's the tawis? Uh, the tawis is, is, is coming, it has to do with Allah if he wants it to arrive, it's going to arrive. Of course everything was sent out, the rest is then to be patient. Oh you know I'm living in a pandemic that nothing is moving and, and you have to then keep making salawats and say, Ya Rabbi please, if I'm deserving of this then facilitate it and bring it for me. I'm in need of this, if you have any good for me Ya Rabbi I'm in need of it now, please bring me this protection, let me to receive this protection. And by the grace of Allah everything arrives. So everything and every interaction with the shaykhs is about sabr and good manners. They want to see, oh you know for five minutes somebody can get angry so bad like that, then, then there's some major issues that the ta'weez can't even help. As salaamu Ya Sayyidi is it possible that we don't feel or see anything but we are receiving the lights, fez without knowing? Most definitely 99.9.99% are in that state. It's not about seeing and feeling anything. Everything that's being given through every zikr, every association, every talk that's being listened to. It's immense oceans of uh, light are being sent upon the soul, but they're deposited in a deposit in an, a hisab for the servant for Yawmul Mashat, for the day of judgment. They're not going to give it to the servant on this earth and he just go around and, and waste it and give it to the hands of shaitan. So everything that's being done, every zikr you do, every awrad you do, uh, it can't be imagined. They said just the, the zikr of Allah or La ilaha illallah, what weight does that have on a Divine scale? They said if you bring all of your amal, all of the bad actions of all creation, put it on a scale in Allah's presence and on the other side of the scale put the dhikr of La ilaha illallah. Does it have any comparison in, in weight and power and majesty? So what, what's being achieved with these practices is something that can't be understood. So of course 99.9999% of all people have not felt anything of what Allah is dressing them, of real, of realities of what Allah is dressing them. And they can't take it in this world and, and nor, nor is the world prepared for them to open that onto this earth. 
So this is all deposited into the hisab, into the account of the ser servant like a child who has an inheritance. And when do you need that inheritance? You know it's deposited into the account and everyone volunteering and servicing everything so that the shaykhs can use that hisab when it's needed. So imagine a difficulty, calamity, something is, is happening and they can ask Allah please Ya Rabbi from what you've deposited into their account of light and blessings they're in need of it now because there's an emergency within their family, emergency within themselves. That can be used on, on this earth if Allah gives permission. And the balance of that account is always for Yawm al mashad that on the Day of Judgment Ya Rabbi what you have bestowed upon us Allah then describes they'll bring it out. When the servant all of a sudden is called up and said, you sit on this couch. There are people who will sit on a chair on judgment day, there are people who will sit on a couch on judgment day, there are people who will be given a throne on judgment day. On a day in which people are burning and boiling Allah is describing there will be some who are raised on chairs, kursis, couches and arshes and thrones. So who are these people? And that light runs into their right hand and seen by people, light shining from their foreheads and seen by people. So all these realities, we don't see that now, no, nobody's walking with a throne anywhere. So it means these are all the realities that Allah dresses and puts aside for the servant. And when they need it most is the day of judgment when the, 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 the most difficult passing of our existence. And what Allah wants to dress and to judge, those lights will be bestowed. Every light from every maqam they visited will be dressed upon them. So everything, alhamdulillah Allah is the best of those who keep an account and hisab inshaAllah. Sayyidi, I was wondering how to measure one's own light, the nur of our soul. How can we know our light? Is it okay or not? Yeah, the, the, the measure your, your light was what we started the, the whole talk with. Just I measure myself by how patient I can be, how humble I can be in the face of pride and arrogance and is my light resonating with my practices. I feel the khushya and the softness in my heart, I feel the, the tenderness and love for Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's presence and I feel that I have a compassion for everything and I'm entering into Allah's oceans of love and rahmah. That's what's important is to take ourselves down and not to get involved in the nafs and, and, the, and the ego to, to, to say, how high am I? What, what's my station exactly? That's, that's the, that your nafs will come into every practice you do if that's what you're thinking and what you're trying to understand. The nafs will come into your meditation and begin to let you to hallucinate in which you see this, you see that, you're, you're getting this, you're going here, you're flying this, you're flying that. And, then everything becomes nafsani. But when you tell yourself, uh, I have no light, I'm no one, I'm nothing. Just let me to feel the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and let me to be nothing Ya Rabbi. Like, Anta subhani ki ni kuntum min adhalimi and abdukul ajeezo, daifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahan. That I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. You know, this teaching, these are from Naqshbandi teachings of the Khatma Khawjagan masters. It's different than every other teaching in the world I think because we, we've sat with many people in different parts. The people who are coming in from the subcontinent, you have a big, big difficulty ahead of you because it's completely different than anything you've ever heard or learned. So when we go to the people of South uh, subcontinent and they're going to announce next shaykh he's alama this, ulama this, give, they give many titles to him and then they, they greet each other with big titles, great one, this one, this one, that one, this one, this one, this one, this one and then ooh it's become like a peacock association everyone feels very happy about themselves and they want to you know inflate themselves in front of the audience. And that was not the way of these Naqshbandi teachers and Sultanul Awliya was always, you know, to deflate yourself. So all of a sudden you go up and say, Ana am a abdikul aji, so I'm da'if, I'm miskeen, I'm zalim, a jahad. Then the shaykh looks, the ulama look at you and say like, get off the stage man. 
<laughs> you just you just said you're like you're you're a poor pauper and a crook and a thief or you're nobody. Get out of here. Who who let this guy on the stage with us? Get him off. Get him off. Because we're all the big ulama ulamas. <laughs> So I said, yeah, I said, no, Naqshbandi teaches something different. I, I'm going to bring myself down in, in the presence of my shaykhs who are looking at me now be, before Allah tries to bring me down. And that's why tariqat uh, is, is uh, tariqat al nusubah khairu fi jamiyya is a way of association. But it's not the association of the 10 murid that are looking at you, it's the association of, of a shaykh when his shaykhs are all looking at him when the tariqah association begins. So the real shaykhs when they begin their shaykhs are right there in front of them looking at them. And that's the tariqah that Mawlana Shah Naqshbani is describing. Our tariqah is based on an association, means what? That when the shaykh he sits he's in an association with his shaykhs and as a result of their fayas, they're looking, they're dressing upon him then everyone in the room can benefit or anyone online will benefit from the association of that shaykh with his, his representative. So that's what's important. So when they efface themselves they don't care what the audience thinks of them but in the presence of their shaykh who's now looking at him and whoever else in that spiritual world is looking at him to dress him he has to say, I'm a Abdul Qurajis, I'm, I'm a poor servant that from the wealth of what Allah gave to you of the bounty I'm absolutely nothing. Da'if, of course I'm weak, I'm sick, I can, cannot heal myself. Da'if miskeen, I'm poor, I'm, I'm poor beyond the wealth of all of the heavenly kingdoms. Miskeen zalim wa jahal and I'm an oppressor to myself and I'm ignorant of everything that have pity and mercy upon me because you teach yourself to be an empty cup and they say, if, if that's what you are, here and we'll give you to eat from our sustenance and to drink from our sustenance and to speak from our words and from our heart. And that was the way that we were trained and taught to, to efface and to be nothing, to be nothing. That's not the same. So then if these, these poor kids who are learning in those countries, they're 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 being trained to pop themselves up and pump themselves up, then those shaykhs will never appear in front of them because you pumped yourself so high that no, no shaykh will be appearing to you and, and receiving and dressing you with the fayas. So then tariqah comes and teaches the correct manners, nothing, nothing, nothing be nothing. Let them have pity upon you and fill your cup so that your audience goes away happy and, and sustain that they didn't go away hungry because of your pride and your arrogance. You took a path to be nothing. <coughs> Sayyidi, Sayyidi, is, uh, is uh, depression, depression, depression a some, a sort, some of sort of character, character defect, 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 defect especially if especially someone is always angry, angry and unhappy with unhappy life? life, life, life. Depression? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Depression and anxiety we, we have talked many times, especially now it's more dangerous and because of the, the events that are happening all around us. These are, these are uh, deep realities of the soul. You know there's clinical depression which is a very extreme and that requires again like anything else you have to become even before any spiritual training makes sense to you. So you have to take the medicines for that, you have to be under the diagnosis of a doctor for, for when it's very severe. If it's just regular depression which everybody has and everybody feels down and everybody feels sort of disconnected, then anxiety and depression are, are related to issues of the soul. Remember the soul understands what's happening in this world and when we're not living up to what the soul wants. It puts a energy and a break upon the body where you can't do anything, you, you don't even understand what you're supposed to be doing tomorrow. That's from the soul putting its foot down and saying, that's it, you're, you're not focusing on the right thing. So alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah every day hundred times minimum, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah Ya Rabbi, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah and that's why then the istighfar and the salawats. That you know the major awrads today in this day and age is make istighfar all day to the afternoon. 
Astaghfirullahal Azim wa atubu ilayk, Astaghfirullahal Azim bi sifat al Azim Ya Rabbi this istighfar to wash me then wash my children, wash my community, wash everything around with istighfar and by afternoon making salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad for the beatific nearness and the rahmah and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because the istighfar is the washing. So we wash ourselves, cleanse ourselves so the beatific light of Sayyidina Muhammad to dress us, accompany us, bless us and all of those blessings. And alhamdulillah wa shukran illah to take away this sort of sadness and depression from the soul that I'm not doing what Allah wanted me to do, I haven't achieved what Allah wanted me to achieve. Anxiety again because there's a concern something is coming, something is coming and I'm not really sort of ready for it. And then you learn how to cut off the past and don't worry about the future. Don't think about the issues of the past, I should have and I could have and I would have. If the past is done, it's finished. And then don't be sort of anxious of the future, just do your salawas, do your zikr, do your practices. You don't have to worry about what the news says, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, they're going to do this. Yeah, whatever they want to do or think they want to do, it's already been planned by Allah. So that's when Allah is saying, they plan but I plan means teaching, please remember I wrote this program. So it means Allah wrote everything, He wrote even what they think they're planning. So then don't worry about anything, Allah already wrote the solution for those who believe. And whatever they plan it never works anyways. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh. Alaikum As Salaam Alaikum. How does one know for sure if they're possessed by a, an evil jinn? Will listening to Ruqya help? Yeah, 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 if you're asking the question you can't be possessed by an evil jinn because you're listening to Khatma Khal Jagan and you're communicating with the Naqshbandi Shaykh. So that's the, the first sign. Now if, if something is around that's aggravating and agitating the home then listening to these tracks that have been put out, listening to the ruqya, doing your salawat and the madad. That you know just to, to listen to something and play it in the house but do no practices, no keeping wudu, don't wear the taweez, don't make your madad, don't do all these things then definitely you're going to have difficulty. So this was a a way in which to motivate the servant when Allah opens these realities for people to feel things or sense something is not right. It's a rahmah and a mercy from Allah that they feel it all so that they can go and get a solution. For every sickness Allah has created a cure. So spiritual sickness of course Allah is inspiring you go sit with these people. They have these tools they'll give you, they have these practices you should learn. <clears throat> they have guidance in which you should sort of commit to and then all of that builds your spiritual energy and spiritual ability and spiritual practices and that's what's important is to wash away. But those whom are truly afflicted with very, very difficult and, and bad situations in which they uh, actually physically attack and they can't even turn on the TV because those beings are not going to let them to watch zikrs. <laughs> Sayyidi, is it possible for humility to be too much that you become too timid, for example like in work? Uh, forgive me if it's a bad question. <coughs> yeah, every, everything has a balance because humility is humility and then the, the, the other side of that and, and shyness is a part of faith anyways but y you can go so deep inside that you're intimidated in fear and fear is not from faith. So you should fear no one and the solution for fear is iman. So we have to be careful with the word of humility and being humble. It's not to be associated with fearing and intimidated by people. To be shy is a part of deen, to be a shy woman is, is an attribute that is is liked by Sayyidina Muhammad to have shyness by men 
to be shy in their deen and, 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 and certain aspects not to cross those lines is liked by Sayyidina Muhammad but to be intimidated by people and fear and then think that that's being humble then that's not a, a correct understanding. So then when we fear things and fear people means there's a lack in our iman and then we have to build the practices. Again the meditation is the strongest because you're asking for a light that you don't have. I send a light of faith into my heart, send an energy into my backbone to give me a strength and not to fear anyone. And that comes with the light of faith. When Allah begin to dress the servant with light and light and light, what happens with iman is that they believe Allah's hand is with them. Prophet's hand is with them. As a result, they have a tremendous level of faith and that counters the fear. So they pretty much resolve those issues of, of fear and uh, they fear only what Allah wants them to fear of Allah. So they fear Allah. They fear that they make Allah to be upset or disappointed or fear that the Prophet would be disappointed with them. But no man, no human to be feared that, that my boss going to fire me and I, I, I have to just you know run away or do this, do that. Nobody can fire you if not written by Allah And nobody can hire you if it's not written by Allah so everything, everything has a process and an understanding inshaAllah. But anything uh, people want to know of these subjects then they just email the shaykh is, is, if I'm being intimidated by my, shaykh, my, my boss is that humble and then you just email and then those are the things that people can email and, and they'll try to give a reply and then give a reply based on all, all these articles. And anyone goes to the website again is an immense resource, just go to nurmuhammad.com and in the search type in the words and most of the articles have been nicely tagged so it'll pull up all these appropriate articles. Each article even has an attached video if it was transcribed so that you can even watch the video if you don't want to read the article. But what happens after we talk and I just make a quick reference to Ayatul Kareem, the articles actually come out with what verse it is, the entire verse that's being quoted instead of just the skimming of the hadith because there's no book I'm reading from, they'll give you the entire hadith in the articles. So the articles are, are, are very resourceful. So you print it out, read it, you get the old the ayat al kareem, all the hadith in there, all the references. If anybody's read the articles they can realize that this shaykh talks all about Qur'an and hadith. So what are they talking about that they don't… they make reference to Qur'an and they only talk from their own talkings and this ridiculous comments that people make. But that's because they haven't read these articles and, and, and seen what… everything is based on Holy Qur'an and all the talks are based on a holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. InshaAllah we'll let everybody go because they're online for like an hour now just to <laughs> hear questions and answers. But that's good that people are asking questions and may Allah address you, bless you and forgive me and keep everybody safe. We're, we're closely approaching the, the beatific birthday of Sayyidina Fatima Tizari Salam. Give us a life and wish to see that blessed night, blessed day and that uh, from the secret of Allahu al-Khaliq that when we want to understand the immensity of Ahlul Bayt and the immensity of her blessed soul as that we've talked before that Allah al-Khaliq, Allah's attribute that He holds for Himself is the Creator. But every creation that comes into existence has a secret given to that creation. So imagine then the immensity of the secret of a womb of a woman in which Allah put a secret there and that secret is allowing creation to come. Every prophet was born from a womb, every saint born from a womb, every pious person born from a womb. So what type of secret of this reality that Allah gave to women? of that reality. So that secret and knowledge everything is in the hands of Sayyidina Muhammad So every uloom, every knowledge is given to Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet dispenses and disperses that knowledge. That secret of al-Khaliq and the secret of the rahim and the womb 
was given from Prophet to Sayyidina Fatima The immensity of that light, the beatific light, the immensity of what the Rahim is. You know the Imam Ali is the Nukht, a dot. What happens when the dot goes into the womb? Something is born and that's called the mulk of dunya. So between the bi'ismi and the ba of Imam Ali Salam, the nukht of Imam Ali Salam, when it touches the secret and the reality of the reality of Sayyidina Fatima Tizari Salam, what was Allah's then the light that Allah brought in was the light of Imam Al Hasan under Safat Al Rahman. So from Bismi Allah, then Al Rahman came. And that's the reality of Imam al Hasan. Then, when that dot came again to the womb, what came? Bismillah, Bismillah, Ar Rahman, then Ar Rahim came, which is the reality of Imam al Hussein. So, Bismi, Imam Ali, Allah dress upon Sitna Fatima Tazara, and Rahman dressing Imam al Hasan, and then Rahim dressing Imam al Hussein. And above all of that is Sayyidina Muhammad So the immensity of these lights, the immensity of these realities, the immensity of just asking Ya Rabbi just let me to, to have a life to observe that night, to be dressed by, by her holy pl- presence and to be dressed by their lights and, and their affection to be raised at their feet on the day of Yawm al and Day of Judgment inshaAllah. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon. Wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.